For his sake, I occupied myself with worldly affairs, and I also supplicated for him. He believed fully that I was dutiful toward my parents, and often used to say that he desired for me to participate in worldly affairs out of a sense of sympathy for me. Though he realized that faith, the thing in which I was most interested, was alone worth pursuing, and he himself, and he himself, was only wasting his time. In the same way, while I was under his care, I had almost unwillingly spent a few years in the service and the employment of the British government. But he found that separation from me sat heavy on him, so he directed me to resign my post. This, Thompson I said, this I gladly did and returned home. My brief experience of official life made me realize that most people in that position led very undesirable lives. Very few of them carry out their religious duties properly, and few of them restrain themselves from the indulgences of illicit pleasures, which are meant to be a trial for them. I found that most of them were eager to collect money lawfully or unlawfully and all their efforts in this brief life were directed towards the world. Only a few, only a few did I find, out of regard to the divine, cultivated the higher moral values like meekness, nobility, and courtesy, and sympathy for mankind, speaking the truth, even talk of righteousness. I found most of them afflicted with arrogance, transgression, neglect of religious values and all types of evil morals. When I returned to my father, I became occupied with the management of our land, but the greater part of my life was devoted to the study of the Holy Quran, its commentaries, and the Hadiths. I found I would often read out portions of these books to my father, who was mostly depressed on account of his failures, of his efforts to recover a part of his ancestral property. On account of these failures, my father always was restless and downcast. Observing these conditions, I was enabled to carry out a pure change in my own life. The bitter life led by my father taught me to value a clean life free from all worldly impurities. Although my father still owned few villages and was in receipt of an annual stipend from the British government and always enjoyed a pension for his service, all this, all this was nothing compared to what he experienced in his younger days. This was why he was always sad and depressed and often said that if he had striven for faith as much as he had striven for the things of this world, he would have been a saint of some repute. On one occasion, he related that he had seen the Holy Prophet وسلم, in his dream proceeding in, uh, in great dignity towards his house like a mighty martyr. My father advanced to welcome him, and when he had come close, he thought, Hush. I should present to him a present. So he put his hands in his pocket and he found only one rupee. Examining this rupee closely, he discovered that it was a false coin. Perceiving this, my father's eyes became wet and he woke up and he interpreted this dream as meaning that love of God and the Holy Prophet mixed with worldly ambition was like a false coin. From this sketch of the promised Messiah's early life, we can, many, we can deduce many takeaways. Three are in particular. One, at an early age, not only was he a dutiful son to both his parents, but his passion was cultivating his relationship with God. Second, while in the workplace, he was acutely aware of the corrupt, unethical culture of his workplace environment. However, he did not allow himself to become a part of those workplace vices for any reason. 
In short, he was not beguiled by the trappings of a professional career. While he was most dutiful, a most dutiful in esteem to his father, to his father's parental authority, he was not influenced, nor did he capitulate to his father's futile worldly entanglements and vain pursuits. For him, for him, the only real and lasting attachment was his passion to achieve God's remembrance.